Why, hello there. Over the past couple of months, I have been working on upgrading all of my praying mantis enclosures and giving them each their own personal setup. So continuing with this theme today, I'm going to set up an enclosure for my ghost mantis. Now, ghost mantises are one of the most common mantises in the hobby. They're also a favorite among keepers and for a good reason. They have great personalities, they're super interactive, and overall just a great mantis species that I love keeping. So today I'm going to take you along and I'm going to show you how I made an enclosure for my ghost praying mantis. So without further ado, let's get things started. Now the enclosure that I'm actually going to be using is this little buggy box right here. This is a custom made front opening wooden glass enclosure that I converted myself. I do have a video on this, so if you wanna see a little bit more as to how I made it, definitely go check that out. But regardless, this will be the perfect canvas for us to get started. So the first thing we need to do is uh, go to the garage. Okay, so the first thing we need to do to get started is make a custom background. Now the way that I make my custom backgrounds for my mantis enclosures is I start with a sheet of XPS foam and then I use a ruler and a tape measure to measure out the size that I want. I then cut it to size and snap it along the table. Then using a selection of a few different pieces of wood as well as a little pot, I lay the tank on its back and then insert the foam into it and then I start scaping. Now this is a little bit different because normally I would just draw the design on, but I decided to kind of blend the scape this time similar to what I did with the lychee enclosure. So I started by just making the scape and just, you know, putting things where I felt like they fit just until I had a design that I really liked. I also decided to put the pot in the top right corner just to give me a little extra space for planting. Once I had a scape I was happy with, I locked everything in place with a little bit of hot glue just to make sure that it wouldn't grow legs and walk away. After that, everything was looking pretty good and I could proceed on with the next step. And the next step is adding some expanding foam. I applied the foam all over the background, making sure to get it in all the little nooks and crannies just to kind of hold everything together as well as shape things up the way that I wanted them to. Then after letting the foam sit for about 24 hours, I came back and started to carve it with my wire brush drill bit. This helps to just trim down the bulk of the foam as well as help shape things up a bit and add a little bit of texture. I also came back in with a hacksaw just to remove the edges that were sticking out a bit. Okay, so now that we're at this point, I'm really happy with how it's turning out so far. I honestly didn't even from the beginning, I wasn't even planning on doing a technique like this. I was just planning on making a regular background. But things change and I decided to go with this, which is completely fine because I like the way it looks so far. Sometimes life takes you in unexpected ways and sometimes those unexpected ways can lead to unexpected greatness. <laughs> But the next thing I'm gonna do, like I usually do, is I'm gonna run over it with the heat gun real quick just to kind of seal everything up. And then I'm gonna go over it with a little bit of sandpaper just to kind of soften some of the sharper edges. And then we can move on to painting. And the materials I'll be using to paint this include some white tintable dry luck as well as concrete pigments to add color. To start things off, I'll get my container. I'll pour a little bit of the dry luck into the container and then use some of the charcoal pigment and add that into the dry lock. Then I'll mix everything together and this will give me a perfect base coat. When applying the base coat, the point here is basically just to get it into all the nooks and crannies. You really wanna cover all the surfaces just so that it will bring the details out later. Once that's dry, I come back with a second coat and this is basically a secondary base coat. It's just, you know, you brush it over the entire surface in a thick layer. And then I'll come back with progressively lighter dry brush coats to hit all the highlights and bring out the details. Why, hello there. Okay, so the background is now painted. I'm honestly really happy with the way this turned out. I think it's a perfect color. I tried to go for like a little bit of a lighter brown. It's kind of harder to see it in this lighting, but once we get it in the tank and everything, it'll look pretty good. And I know some of you might be wondering, in a lot of my videos when I talk about praying mantis scapes, I say you gotta give them a lot of areas to molt from. My ghost mantis is an adult, so this is not a concern with him. And even if it was, there's still plenty of spaces to mold. I've got plenty of branches coming out, plus there's the mesh at the top and then all sorts of plants. Ghosts are pretty hardy. They're also pretty good climbers, so they can climb just about any surface. But regardless, this background will work perfectly for my mantis. So now that the background is complete, the next thing we need to do is go downstairs and continue with the project. Okay, so we're now back downstairs and let me show you what it's looking like. So far we have the tank completely assembled and we also have the background completely built, painted and installed. Now I think it's looking really, really great so far. I really like how I combined the scape with the background. And speaking of scape, one of the next steps I normally would do is build the scape, but again, since this is a part of the background, I won't need to do that. So the next thing that we need to do is make a false bottom. So let's make a false bottom. In order to make the false bottom, I start with some Lika that I pour into the bottom of the tank and just spread it around to get a nice even layer. Then after that, I take a little bit of window screen mesh and I set the tank on top of that and trim around the edges. Once that's done, I add the mesh into the tank and make sure to fold up the edges against the glass to make sure substrate won't get through. Okay, so now that we have the false bottom installed, 
The next thing we need to do is move on to adding the substrate. So the substrate that I use is basically just an altered ABG mix. Regular ABG mix will be fine, but I have different humidity levels down in this room and I need to adjust it based on what I need. To give you the exact list of the stuff I use, I start with three parts cocoa fiber, then two part reptile bark, one part sand, and one part charcoal. After that, I thoroughly mix everything together and then add it into the tank. Now when I add this, I usually slope it up towards the back a bit just to help create some depth. So now that the substrate's in place, the next step is the plants. Now, as usual, it's very important to be careful with plants as well as to take the proper steps in order to prepare them. Because a lot of plants, regardless of where you get them from, will have pesticides. Even if you get them from like a reptile safe place, there's still a chance they could have pesticides. And it won't hurt just to prep them and take that extra step. Now, obviously mantises are super, super susceptible to pesticides and it can even kill them. But I've come up with a way to kind of at least try and prevent it as much as I can. Now the method that I use is I start by removing each plant from its pot and then breaking up all of the soil around the roots. Then I'll take them to a source of water, whether that be outside or to the sink, and I wash off any remaining soil as well as rub the leaves and stems thoroughly. And then just to further ensure that I get as much off as I can, I soak them in water for about 10 to 15 minutes. Now the water is hot and it's also dechlorinated. So now that the plants are all buggy safe and all that stuff, it's time to get this thing finished. So I'm going to add the final details, I'm going to get it planted, and then I'm going to add, you know, leaf litter, moss, whatever, really. Just all the little tiny little details, and that way we can make it good. So let's make it good. Hey there! Thank you guys for watching this video. I had a really fun time setting this one up. I love the change of the background techniques. In fact, I'll probably use it a lot more on my mantis enclosures. A lot of times with the foam and dry lock technique, it's really hard just to get that detail in and just, you know, carve it, especially when you get down to the smaller ones. Sometimes the foam is a little bit easier because it just kind of helps me, you know, blend the scape and stuff. And with, again, with the smaller ones, it's really hard just to get that detail in. But regardless, I really love how this one turned out. I love the way the plants look. I love the plant selection that I chose. Eclipse is doing great so far and he's loving his new home. I have them right next to my Darth Vader Mantis, and these enclosures are the same size, so they look really cool together. But again, that's going to do it for this week. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all next week.